Good morning. I hope you had a good weekend. So before I get into the actual painting with alcohol inks, I just want to warn you about some health hazards that might occur when using alcohol inks, more precisely about isopropyl alcohol and the alcohol blending solution. They can be pretty nasty <laughs> and I would urge you to take the necessary precautions especially for people that have already respiratory problems. Inhaling the fumes of these products can present some health issues. And I have to tell you that while I was working on this painting, I was wearing a mask. I also had a window open and I had a fan in my kitchen going on. Mind you, I'm working in a very small space, but I had to stop a few times. Um, and get out of the room and go and breathe some fresh air. And I was being super careful. I was manipulating um, a hair dryer. And so, of course, that kind of moved the fumes even more. And maybe that's why I felt the, uh, the effects more. But regardless, I would hate for you to... Um, to use these products and not be warned in advance and i know that this might go against what i'm showing you right now but please be careful and you might want to go and do some research look it up on the internet uh, find out what the specifics about the hazards are i'm not going to go into details here but i think it's very important to go in um, with a clear mind and alcohol inks might not be for you as i said I know that it's quite damaging to people that already have respiratory problems. So now that I've scared you, <laughs> let's get on with the painting. A couple of notes before I leave you with some music. I am taping a piece of Yupo paper onto plexiglass and that just uh, offered additional support because Yupo is flimsy and I needed to, the ability to flip it around, not flip it around, but tilt it and rotate it and do all kinds of tricks. So that offered additional support. You don't have to use plexiglass. You can use a piece of glass. Uh, you can use metal. Anything that's not porous and that is rigid will work. And if you're using a hairdryer like I'm doing, make sure you're on the cool setting <laughs> because Yupo is plastic. And if you take heat to it, it will warp and you will never get it straight again. Also, the scotch shape that I used to hold the paper down is cheap. It's from the dollar store and it worked beautifully and it left a nice white border all around the painting. I also want to mention that I'm not an experienced artist when it comes to alcohol inks. I'm still in the discovery stage. This time around, I used uh, different methods. So I'm still learning. And of course, I've enjoyed the process. But uh, just be aware that I'm sure I've made a few mistakes. So for those of you that are experienced with the medium, any suggestions uh, would be welcome. And I have not done real-time commentary this time around because of the background noise that I was dealing with. So I'll be back at the end to talk about my experience. In the meantime, enjoy the video.
Every time I use alcohol inks, I'm always surprised at their potential, but also their limitations. It's, I find, a very difficult medium to control, and that's probably the attraction uh, to alcohol inks, for me anyways. It's kind of like a challenge. Uh, you have to, you know, tame the beast sort of thing. But I do have to say that uh, from now on, if I work with alcohol inks, I'm going to make sure that I am outside. You will have seen the warning at the beginning of this video. And again, I want to reiterate the importance of it. I had taken all the precautions that I could. Unfortunately, at this point in time, I can't work outside. So I had my window fully open, which is why I couldn't do a voiceover. There was a lot of traffic going on. I was wearing a mask and gloves and glasses. The fan in the kitchen was going on. Mind you, I don't have a fan in here in the studio. So I put all my chances, you know, on, on my side. And even still, I had to take breaks quite often. My mouth was kind of like, and I know it became like super raw. Uh, to the point where I almost rinsed my mouth, you know? Uh, in fact, not almost, I did. Um, the fumes are quite toxic. I'm not sure if they're super toxic, but they are annoying. And um, especially if you're using 99% alcohol, this stuff is very smelly. Even the alcohol blending solution, uh, I find the fumes are quite strong. Um, so again, I urge you, please, 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 please take all the necessary precautions. If you can't do this in a well-ventilated area or outside, don't do it, please. Uh, I'm not making this video to entice everybody to try alcohol inks and hopefully the ones that can work in that type of environment will uh, like this video. But if you are not equipped or if you are not I know I'm repeating myself, but if you're not in a safe place to work with alcohol inks, please don't, okay? Very important. Um, so having said that and, and having repeated myself from the beginning, um, I liked taping the sheet to a board. Now this is a large, large sheet that I bought and I cut it in uh, four pieces. So next time that I work on Yupo is going to be with watercolor. I've been experimenting some more. Um, so taping the piece to a board that is non-absorbent, I find uh, was working really well for me. I will also experiment some more putting my board on a Lazy Susan or like a rotating platter. I've seen people do that. I've been watching quite a few videos on the subject. Um, so, you know, I'm still learning. I'm still in that learning phase. But I love this piece now. Uh, there were a few things that I did and I regretted. The mixatives are quite opaque and very, um, they don't travel as much, obviously. And then they're hard to remove. Like, for instance, this circle here, I had a hard time and it still looks silver to me. So to me, I think it kind of looks like, like a faded silver bubble, I guess. It's not white. Uh, this pen is fantastic, the fillable pen, the Adirondack, Tim Holtz Adirondack fillable pen. That's awesome. It's got two tips, a fine tip and a brush tip. You can do cool effects with that. I've seen people using styluses with, you know, the little balls at the end, but I, um, I wanted to try and use just this and it works perfectly. And of course you can keep on refilling it, uh, no problem. I, that's what I use for the little white dots here and there. I had to work really hard at removing some of the silver mixative here. I was unhappy with how it looked. I wanted to incorporate this sort of like ribbon and I was not happy with that long uh, silver streak right here. So that's why I kind of like camouflaged it a little bit by introducing a the movement with the ribbon on top and then you probably saw or picked up on that I used the fillable pen to extend that silver um, branch whatever it is and it worked beautifully because um, I know you can paint with this uh, you can use 
dried up rubbing alcohol pick up the color and then achieve like awesome results. I know I've, I think once I've made a card with this when I was working at, uh, with Scrapbook Central. But anyways, all this to say that I am happy with the end result. I still have a lot to learn. The use of a blow dryer on the cool setting, fantastic idea. Whoever thought of that is a genius. Thank you so much. Um, I love to see the colors traveling. It did two things. It made the color travel, but at the same time, you can stop the alcohol, uh, the alcohol or the color to go too far. So it dries at the same time. It makes it travel, but it dries it at the same time. So if you're doing little circles like this and you're afraid that they're going to be too big, you can just like work in tandem with the blow dryer and you know a pen something like that i still have to coordinate my movements with the blow dryer and something else it was kind of awkward to me uh, next time i do something like this if i can it'll be outside and i will use a um, rotating platter so that i can work more easily i wanted to tell you i have discovered that um, i know i probably covered this in my previous alcohol ink video but i've discovered that the micro perm pens from sakura and oh boy i can't even read the writing here it just fades i think it was the perma pen by a company i don't know uh it just rubbed off on my on my fingers or my hands while i was working but i will find the link to where i got this i think i got it from oh What's that in uh, AliExpress? So I will try and put the link to these two pens because they were fantastically on here. And if you happen to drop water on your work, it's not going to move. Of course, if you drop alcohol in alcohol per se on your work, it, everything will move because alcohol it will dissolve that. But what are the chances? I mean, if you put this on a wall. Um, you're not gonna have to worry too much about dropping alcohol unless you decide to splash alcohol on your walls. Then in that case, well, good luck. <laughs> so anyway, I love this piece. I'm gonna call it from within. I feel that it's kind of like an explosion of stuff. It's busy, yes, but I think, I think it works. So that's it for this video. I just wanna mention that when I did this painting, I actually did a second one, but in a completely different style. So I will have that video up for you tomorrow. You will also find a list of supplies in the description of, of this video, but only on YouTube. So if you're watching on Facebook or any other social media platform, you need to click on the title of the video within the window box, uh, or the video <laughs> window, I should say, and that will take you over to YouTube where you'll be able to find the list if you click on show more underneath the window. And if you are inspired by this painting and you want to make something uh, with alcohol inks and you would like to share, please make sure that you tag me so I can see it. I'm at Creation CC on Facebook and Instagram and if you use that tag then i will be notified and i will go and look at your artwork so thank you so much for watching thank you my awesome patrons for being great supporters of my art i appreciate each and every one of you have a fun and creative day and i will see you tomorrow